Hey there folks, it's your boy Kamal once again with yet another very interesting integral. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 minus x squared over 1 plus x squared dx. The result is really cool and this integral was actually inspired by a related integral shared by subscriber Ryan Davis. So thanks Ryan, the integral is pretty neat, the result is like I said extremely cool and in fact we'll derive another interesting result which is actually an infinite series for one of our favorite special functions. So without further delay, let's begin. We'll start off with the logarithm function here and by that I mean the series expansion for log 1 minus z which is negative sum over k from 1 to infinity of z to the k over k provided that the absolute value of z is less than 1 which is clearly satisfied for z equal to x squared on our interval of integration. So this implies that log 1 minus x squared equals negative sum over k from 1 to infinity of x to the 2k over k. Now making use of this series expansion, we have i equal to negative integral from 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus x squared times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of x to the 2k over k dx. Now I'm going to switch up the order of the operators here and write this as negative sum over k of 1 over k times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 2k over 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, cool. And now for a nice little transformation where we let x squared equal t, or equivalently, we just let x here equal root t, which implies that dx equals 1 over 2 root t dt. And the limits of integration are clearly not bothered by our transformation, so i here is now negative integral, uh, negative sum over k, that is, of 1 over k times the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the k times Okay, we have a factor of 1 half, that's outside, and we have t to the negative 1 half over 1 plus t dt. And we'll simplify this a bit to get negative 1 half times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the k minus 1 half over 1 plus t dt. And now to make use of a really cool result we derived a while back, and that is the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the s minus 1 over 1 plus t dt equals the digamma function at s minus digamma s over 2 minus log 2. So in our case, we have s minus 1 equal to k minus 1 half, which implies that s here should be k plus 1 half. So that means i equals negative 1 half times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times we have digamma uh, s here being k plus 1 over 2. So we have k plus 1 over 2 here minus the digamma function at k over 2 plus 1 quarter. And I'm going to need a little bit more writing space. Minus log 2, which does look extremely cool. I mean, this is one awesome looking infinite series, but what on earth does it evaluate to? Well, that's easy. It evaluates out to the value of this integral. So now it's time to actually solve for the integral's value. One thing to notice about the target integral is that we have terms like one minus x squared or equivalently one minus x times one plus x. And of course the one plus x squared term. So when we have terms like that, and we're integrating from 0 to 1, a particular substitution can be very useful. And that particular substitution is the Weierstrass substitution, where we let x here equal 1 minus t over 1 plus t. So yes, this is one of the coolest transformations in existence. And wow, does it work. So let's differentiate to get the transformation for the differential element. We have dx here equal to 1 plus t times negative 1. Uh, give me a moment. 
much better. Minus 1 minus t times 1 divided by 1 plus t whole squared dt. Okay, cool. So we have some cancellations here. And yeah, the t's go away. And we're left with negative 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. And that's how dx works out in the t realm, as far as the limits are concerned, as x approaches 0. Now, this function over here, that is f of x equal to y equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x, you can verify quite easily that this is a self-inverse function. So the neat thing here is you can write x in terms of y in exactly the same form. So you write x equal to 1 minus y over 1 plus y. So by that token, we do have t here equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x. So as x approaches 0, we have t approaching 1. And as x approaches 1, we have t approaching 0. Okay, cool. So this implies that i here equals the integral now from 1 to 0 of log 1 minus x squared. Oh, wait, there's... There's a bit more work to do, so let me just zoom out a bit. And now for 1 minus x squared, that would be 1 minus 1 minus t, terribly sorry about that, over 1 plus t squared. This simplifies out to 1 plus t squared minus 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t whole thing squared. So over here, you get rid of the 1 and the t squared terms, and you're left with 4t over 1 plus t squared. So that's 1 minus x squared. And I think you can see pretty easily that 1 plus x squared would evaluate out to, in that case, you lose the 2t terms. They cancel out because you have plus 2t and minus 2t, of course. So that sorts out to 2 times 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t whole thing squared. Okay, cool. So we have everything written out in front of us. So now we write i as the integral from 1 to 0. We also have this negative sign because of the differential element. And we have log 1 minus x squared, which sorts out to 4t over 1 plus t squared over 1 plus x squared, which is one, uh, 2 times 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t whole thing squared. And we also have 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Immediately, we have some really nice cancellations taking place. And of course, we can switch up the, the order of the limits of integration to get rid of that pesky negative sign outside, which I will most definitely forget. So I'm just going to get rid of it. We have integral from 0 to 1 again. And we have log 4t minus log 1 plus t squared using the properties of the logarithm. And come to think of it, again, using the properties of the logarithm, we just write this 2 here as a coefficient. And we're left with 1 plus t squared in the denominator. So that means, again, we can invoke the properties of the logarithm. So log 4 times t is log 4 plus log t. And using the linearity of the integration operator, after all, we have integral 0 to 1. Log 4 is just a constant. So we have dt over 1 plus t squared plus integral 0 to 1 log t over 1 plus t squared. Terribly sorry about that. Minus 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus t over 1 plus t squared dt. Actually, a very famous integral that I have evaluated about two or three times. I, yeah, I think I have about two videos on this. This is the famous A5 Putnam integral that I solved using Feynman's trick and the wire stress substitution. So I'll link that video in the description box. This thing evaluates quite nicely to pi over 8 times log 2. And if you want to take a crack at it without watching the video, then yeah, either Feynman's trick or the wire stress substitution. I believe the wire stress substitution is the more fun way to do it because it sorts the integral out very, very nicely in this case. So this thing is just pi over 8 times log 2. This thing over here is, of course, an arctangent integral. So we have arctangent t with the limits being 0 and 1. 
So arctangent 0 is 0, arctangent 1 is pi over 4, so that's what this thing sorts out to. And we have this integral here that I will return to in a moment. So this implies that I here equals, I'm just going to call this thing I sub 1 for reference purposes. So I here equals pi over 4 times 2 log 2, that's of course log 4, some nice cancellation minus 2 times pi over 8, again we have some nice cancellation, and we have log 2, we have a plus i over here, i sub 1 that is, so we have pi over 2, log 2, minus pi over 4, log 2, and that's 1 minus 1 half, which equals 1 half, so that should sort out to pi over 4, terribly sorry about that, log 2, plus i sub 1, Okay, cool. That was pretty nice. Now, what about the integral i sub 1? We'll evaluate that now separately, and very quickly, I might add. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of log x over 1 plus x squared. I'm just renaming the dummy variable back to x. Of course, the name of the dummy variable does not matter. And we'll expand the 1 over 1 plus x squared term as the geometric series. So we have log x times the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k dx. We'll rearrange this and write it as the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times the integral from 0 to 1, x to the 2k times, terribly sorry about that, log x dx. Very simple integral to solve. We have sum over k, negative 1 to the k, and integration by parts gives us x to the 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 times log x, terribly sorry about that once again. Limits are 0 and 1. Minus 1 over 2k plus 1 is just a constant, integral 0 to 1 x to the 2k plus 1 times the logarithm's derivative is 1 over x in this case. So this thing, you can easily verify, it sorts out to 0. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times what exactly? Well, there's this negative sign that I'm just writing outside. Of course, you can absorb it into the negative 1, but it won't matter anyway. And then you're left with, well, x to the 2k integrates to x to the 2k plus 1. Limits are 0 and 1, so you just get a 1 for the 1 limit and a 0 for the 0 limit. And you're left with this 2k plus 1 term in the denominator, 1 initially and 1 because of the integration. Okay, cool. So we have this strange looking infinite series that mankind has wondered thousands of years as to what this thing actually converges to. And we did not have a definitive answer until now, thanks to some alien technology escaping from Area 51. We now know that this thing is actually the original top G, Catalan's constant, immortalized on your t-shirts, on your hoodies, and on, well, more merchandise to be added later. But the important thing is, we know what this thing sorts out to. This is Catalan's constant. So, oh wait, the sum here is from zero to infinity. Yeah, this thing is actually Catalan's constant, and we have a negative sign, so it's negative top G. So this implies, that the target integral i sorts out to pi over 4 log 2 minus Catalan's constant. So that's the target integral. And recall that we had this really cool infinite series that we constructed. Uh, you guys know what kind of things I do when I'm bored, so yeah. I wasn't really bored, but I just saw that, okay, you can invoke a series expansion, so why not? And now you have this extremely cool, this ridiculous looking infinite series in terms of the digamma function. I mean, this thing looks, this thing is just awesome. It really is awesome. So we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times digamma k plus 1 half minus digamma k over 2 plus a quarter minus log 2 
this thing equals, well, multiplying by negative 2. So we have 2 times cat lens constant minus pi over 2 log 2, which is extremely cool indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.